So if you have a Typhoon H and you've been taking videos recently, you probably noticed that the video quality coming out of this little CGO3 Plus camera, it's not as great as some of the other drones on the market. It's really not as mature. And that's because of two main problems with this camera. And those are white balance and exposure. However, with a little knowledge about white balance and a little knowledge about exposure and how it works on the Typhoon H, uh, you can actually capture really good looking videos. And I'm gonna show you how it's done in this video. Stay tuned. The first item every Typhoon pilot should be familiar with are the four available video image modes as seen here. If you have no intentions of doing video post-production or editing and just want good looking video, then the gorgeous image mode is perfect. If you want to make a more professional looking video with post-production, video color grading and editing, then you'll want to use the natural image mode. Now if you really want to play with the colors in post-production and create some fancy imaging, then selecting the raw image mode will allow for this. And finally, if you're filming after sunset and before sunrise, then the night image mode is perfect. You set a camera's white balance so that the objects that are white in person also appear white in the video. If the whites your camera sees are correct, then theoretically all of the other colors will all fall correctly into place. Whites can look warm, cool, or neutral depending on how the sunlight is filtered. For example, have a look at these keyboards. Which keyboard is the white one? The answer is, they are all white. It's just the lighting that's making the white look not so white. In this photo you see two t-shirts. Both photos are identical. The difference is that the photo on the left has the white balance adjusted by selecting the portion of the shirt in the sun. If you adjust the white balance to the portion of the t-shirt that's in the shade, you end up with the photo on the right, which looks yellow and wrong. The interface for the CGO3 Plus comes with six common white balance settings plus a lock setting. In this image, I've set the white balance correctly. We have a white box, blue carpet, and a yellow wall. Now watch what happens to the colors as I select a different white balance. Select sunny on bright days where the sun is pretty much directly overhead and whites look white to your eyes. Select cloudy on days where everything looks dull, such as overcast days. The clouds are filtering the sunlight, so when you select cloudy, the camera will warm up the whites. When flying indoors under fluorescent lights, select this option. This setting warms up the whites and takes the coldness away. Again, if flying indoors where there are light bulbs that give off that warm yellow color, like in any house, then select this option so that the camera cools down the warm light. Sunrise Sunset is a photographer's secret. This option should be selected whenever there are shadows around any objects you're filming. It takes the cool blue out of shadows and makes them look more black. When you're shooting a video and the light source doesn't change, then it's always a good idea to lock in the white balance. In a perfect world, this is how you would lock in the white balance. Take your camera to the location you're going to film, point at the subject, place your camera on auto, place a large white object for your camera to focus on, and then lock it in. Okay, so that's not very realistic with a drone. However, most drone pilots make the common error that they don't white balance for their subject. Your subject is either the sky or the ground. Check out this video. This is a typical drone video. The white balance is not set for the sky and it's not set for the land. So the white balance gets averaged out and the image becomes much too warm. So here I have the Typhoon flying over the same scene again, but this time the camera's pointed down and the white balance is set to the water. This way we have a subject, which is the water, so the colors are more true to what we're looking at. The land looks more realistic and so does the water. In this clip you can see that the white balance is set for the sky. And in this clip the white balance is set for the ground. So remember if the lighting doesn't change, point at your subject and lock in the white balance. If your video looks like it was taken by a toy camera, it's probably because the exposure was incorrect. Now you can fix this simply by locking in the exposure. Here's a typical example of auto exposure and auto white balance. Watch when the camera pans up, the image will change not only in exposure but also slightly in color. Now if we lock in the exposure and lock in the white balance, it looks much more professional. Colors don't change and the exposure does not change. And we even get some nice sunlight coming through the trees. 
Okay, this next example is a little bit long. This here I filmed early in the morning. It was on gorgeous setting with auto white balance and auto exposure. The colors look pretty good so far. It's a little yellowish because I didn't adjust the white balance. And watch what happens as I'm moving towards the soccer field. This is typical of the CGO3 Plus camera. As the light changes, you're going to see the exposure setting slowly change. You can actually view it and watch it change as it's going to get darker and darker and darker as we're moving forward towards the cornfield. The light hasn't changed, it's just the exposure changing. That ruins your entire video, unfortunately. Now watch what happens when I pan to the left and look at the sun. All of a sudden the white balance is showing a lot of red and everything's become dark. Here I'm flying over the same area again. I've adjusted the exposure to manual and I've adjusted the auto white balance to locked white balance. So I've locked in the white balance on a particular area, which is the land. So I want the greens to be green, the browns to be brown, and as you can see it looks pretty good. The exposure doesn't change, the lighting doesn't change, everything looks good. I even moved the camera up there a little bit and the exposure stayed exactly the same. As I move forward, nothing changes. The image looks quite professional. As I get to the end, I'm going to speed up the video here a little bit as I pan around. And you'll see nothing changes with the exposure. I'm going to look directly at the sun. Don't have a massive amount of red light coming in now. Everything looks good. And even if I speed it up a little bit here and I raise the drone into the air, the Typhoon, I'm going to move it up in the air, looking down at that bright sunlight reflecting off the water, which would normally turn the picture black because of the brightness. Everything's fine. I'm looking straight at the sun. It's just above the lens and I can still see in the horizon. Okay, so to lock your exposure, it's pretty simple. All you do is point your camera at whatever you're about to film and then hit the little auto button followed by the big red auto button and that red auto button will turn into the letter M and your exposure is locked. Post-processing refers to all the enhancements you do to your video after filming. I use a free program called DaVinci Resolve. Here I am in the color grading panel and I have the image mode raw, so video taken in raw. Now I'm going to use a LUT which is a lookup table and I'm going to pick a 3D LUT and I'm going to use a Sony sensor type LUT and watch it come to life. Over on the right you can monitor your red, green and blues. Make sure that one is not more dominant than the other. And if you wish to adjust, just use the gamma control. To sharpen or blur the image, your controls right here. Just pull the slider down. Don't go below 46 or else that becomes too sharp. And finally to make your picture pop a little bit, you can adjust the luminance and saturation right here. Okay, so after all that work, how does that raw image actually look? Well, here's the original raw image, and I'm going to switch now to the post-processed one. And here's another raw image. I've ran the post-processing on it. And after a few minutes of work, it looks like this. Now, if you film in image mode natural, which is my preferred filming mode with the Typhoon, it takes much less effort to get an image like this after a little bit of post-processing. Image Style Gorgeous is probably the least friendly to do post-processing on because the camera has already sharpened it quite a bit and the camera's also added colors that aren't really real, they're oversaturated. They're usually wrong and they're bland sometimes too. Uh, so here we have a gorgeous image. However, I was shooting into the sun so this is kind of bland. So now, with a little bit of processing power, I kind of got the colors a little bit better. Got a little bit more contrast, a little bit more saturation, still shooting into the sun. 
but it looks a hell of a lot better than the original gorgeous mode. So post-processing is possible in gorgeous image mode, it just requires uh, quite a bit more work to get a quality image. So there you have it, a few tips on how to capture better quality video just by using the manual settings and doing a bit of post-processing. Now if you're going to use ND filters or you're going to adjust the shutter speed with the ND filter to capture that cinematic motion, uh, make sure you adjust the white balance and the exposure or it's really not going to look that great, you're not going to see any difference. You have to do everything all combined. So once again, hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more helpful videos in the future.